We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. You gotta have a like the why, and we know our why. So I think you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Millions and millions of people have done this already. You can get help, you can get a roadmap, you can save a lot of time, money, and frustration. <laughs> Welcome to the Value Add Podcast with K&K. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Value Add Podcast with K&K. Um, we today are going to have our guest, Robbie Abavala, on the show. Um, if you have not heard of Ravi, it's probably because you're not doing um, anything really online. Ravi has got a pretty fascinating background. He went from being a law school dropout to making millions showing other entrepreneurs and business owners how to scale their business. So he has a course called Scaling with Systems and he really is a master at systems. He basically teaches you A to Z how to generate leads and bring in business for your business uh, without spending a bunch of extra time, which is something that most entrepreneurs don't have. And also the fact that most entrepreneurs don't really have the skills to bring in their own leads. So he gives you all of the processes and systems through his course on how to do that without uh, taking a bunch of extra time. Yeah, the other crazy thing is, is um, I just love guys like Ravi, honestly, um, he got us fired up. I mean, he's what, 24? Is he even 24? 24 years old. Um, and that's why I tell people I laugh. I'm like, it's the age doesn't matter anymore. It's just the drive. And the cool thing about him is I think the similar we have is he just kind of jumps in and just starts swimming and goes. He doesn't try to be perfect. He doesn't sit here and have to like, he doesn't think about it too long. He like wants to do something. He just goes right after it. And I think... You're going to learn by on this episode, you're going to see that. And this is why a lot of people that are her, his age, his or her, whatever, any of these, you know, guys, girls out there crushing online is they don't sit around and wait. They know what they want to do. They see people winning, they jump in and they just go do it. And, and it's a reminder, even for Crystal and I too, we we're like, wow, he literally created this course and it was like, boom, let's go. Well, it's kind of crazy because even though he is 24 years old, he's built up like a really strong business. I mean, he's got testimonials to back it up. He's built out the entire program. He's tried things and made mistakes. I mean, he moved here from Florida. He had uh, has a real estate company that brings in leads. Um, it generates leads still. Plus, he has his course, Scaling with Systems. So um, it's a super interesting episode. He's a super smart guy. Um, he's got a lot of really great ideas. I think if anybody, if, if any of us need to learn from somebody, it's probably that generation too that's tested and tried and hasn't been scared to do these things. Um, they've really put themselves out there and kind of perfected their system. And I think systems is one of those things that most of us uh, – uh, business owners, small business owners struggle with. I mean, most of us don't have systems. We kind of fly by the seat of our pants, us included. We have some systems, but we could probably create a heck of a lot more. Um, so he's just a super interesting guy. He could definitely help out, uh, help you out in your business, uh, whatever the business is that you're in, because most of us want more business. That's what we're focusing on. Uh, and he can show you exactly how to scale. Yeah. And to wrap up, one of the cool things you're going to learn is I think um, a lot of people are starting, it's starting to come out more and more is these mastermind groups and who you're around. And um, he's got to meet a lot of really great, smart, basically leaders in the space. Um, I don't know if he talks about online, but he's going to some crazy mastermind, spending a lot of money. He's spending, I think, six figures a year on just building his personal brand, which he basically said that Crystal and I need to do. Um, and I think you're going to realize, like, we you know, we talked about before, what you get from building a brand and what you get from doing something online and uh, how this is generating cash flow him and you know his in next interest is how to start buying real estate, which is a little conversation there. So let's jump into it without further ado. Here we go. All right. We're live. We are live. I can hear you all. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, You're almost yeah. as loud as I am. That's hilarious. Uh, uh, I don't think 
Oh, I don't know. So, Robbie, like, our podcast is more about, like, real estate, but you have so many interesting things that you've done in the past. <laughs> Let's at least first get the real estate out of the way well, and talk happy about to do that. how, like, how you kind of got on this journey. It sounds like it, it did start in real estate. Yeah, ironically, so it, it didn't start in real estate. It started marketing in real uh-huh. estate. That's kind of how I started. Okay. I think it's funny because I talk to a lot of different business owners in, like, my space, and I think a lot of people go, ironically, like we were just talking, from real estate industry to, like, the marketing digital product industry. Uh, And I ironically went from the marketing digital product industry into the real estate industry. And that was just because it was actually a client of mine in California, in Southern California. And like we did within four weeks, he had made about $120,000 in commissions working with us. And we do a flat retainer monthly. And when that happened, I was like, I might be on the wrong side of this, <laughs> this point here. Like, it just hit me. I was like, I should probably. And the people kept on offering me the, to do like referrals, but technically, as you guys know, I can't take referrals as, as not a licensed agent. Yeah. So, uh, created the agency, ran that for about a year and a half, and then in uh, June, July, June, January of 2019. I opened up a real estate brokerage in the state of Florida, and so now I have a brokerage in the state of Florida, and now. We have zero agents. I joke around that I sell more houses than most of the real estate agents that I know, but I have, I've never walked into a house, an open house one time in my whole life uh, because all I do, just like we talk about systems and scaling and all that kind of stuff, was I generate leads, I qualify them using my qualification team, and then we refer them out to agents in local markets in that area. And it doesn't even have to be just in Florida. We do California, I do New York, we do New Jersey as well. So... Uh, our transactional volume is pretty high for our brokerage, but it's really just referrals that we're sending out to other people. And then now I'm getting into the real estate investment game, just like we were talking a second ago as well. And I mean, that's been something I've been always very interested in, but I think like you guys have an awesome podcast and you guys lower the barrier of essentially information. I think that's out there because like, if if you don't know what you're doing, you have capital, you want to get into real estate. And you and I talked about like the syndications and stuff that's out there. That's like, Oh, just give your money there. And we talked about the pros and cons of that. But, uh, I just didn't know anything about real estate investing. I thought it was so much more confusing. Just like I thought stocks were until I learned about the S and P 500. And now I'm just like casually tucking away money in the S and P 500. So right now we're starting to get into, uh, like I said, a four, four unit in Pacific beach. Then there's a 12 unit that we're doing down in Phoenix right now. I'm starting to dabble a little bit more in the actual investor side of it. Um, so yeah, it's an actually super interesting trajectory because I'm like speaking and talking to all these real estate investors and agents and loan officers. And for the past year and a half, I've been like trying to sell them something essentially like, Hey, work with our company and it's a fair exchange of value. And now I'm like, Hey, like, teach me how to do whatever you guys are doing right now. Right. And we talk about the 0% and all that stuff as well. So I went from the advertiser side to the like, broker slash investor side. Uh, and I think that most people that I've met in this space are paying a marketing company to do their leads for them. And they go, man, why am I paying a marketing? Why don't I just be the person that's a marketing company selling leads to the other real estate agents as well? Uh, so yeah, I, I kind of did it opposite than everyone else, but, um, but I love it. I'm happy it worked out the way that it did. And so now we're actually just like diving more towards the investing side of it as well. Yeah. Quick question though. How do you generate? So there's like tons of lead gen companies sure. out there for like hundreds. Real uh, so unreal- many. Yeah. I get on LinkedIn probably every week, like 12 people <laughs> like that are trying to give me real estate. But also let's be honest. A lot of them are garbage. Oh, no, right, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. how do you guys differentiate your like how are you so successful with the lead gen and with real estate leads yeah that's an awesome question question. so uh, two things like number one um and facebook and youtube and all these different lead sources have been like changing right because like housing compliance acts etc etc but one of the best things that we did was so i started my agency in 2018 my advertising agency we got into real estate pretty quickly just because of the local market i was in florida all my friends and family were real estate agents and i was just like you know all right let me try this out and so the biggest issue that I was having was I was sending, I would generate a lead on Facebook or Google or YouTube, and I would send it straight to the real estate agent. And so based on the numbers that we have today, so we do about 4,000 leads a week uh, for real estate agents. And based on the numbers we have today, it's like 64, 65% of leads come in after 5 p.m. and before 9 a.m. And about 31% of leads come in Saturday and Sunday. So AKA the majority of your leads, lion's share of your leads are coming in when you really don't want to be answering the phone or talking yeah. to anybody. Yeah, 100% agree. And so I'm sending all these leads to these agents and then like the end of the 30 days would come up and they'd be like, your service sucks, right? This isn't working, <laughs> I'm not closing any deals out of it. And 
I learned very quickly that they weren't calling the leads because I would like what's known as secret shop. I would put my own information in there or one of my team members' information in there, and we'd never get a call. So smart. Or I would literally, at the end of the meeting, when they were going there to fire me, this is actually an example of what happened, like end of the month oh, meeting, awesome. they went there to go fire me. I was like, yeah, let's meet in person so I can break it down. And <laughs> I, on right before the meeting, I took the lead list that we had, and I called three people randomly on there, and I recorded myself on my computer on QuickTime. I was like, hey, this is Ravi Uvala. Uh, I'm with so-and-so Realty Group. I'm not part of trying to sell you anything. I'm just part of the quality control department. I just want to know, did anybody ever reach out to you because I saw you opted into this thing a little ago? They're like, no, no, I never got any, any calls or anything like that. I was like, oh, well, why have you here? Are you still interested in that? Pro-? Yeah, yeah, we are very much interested. I'm like, great. Can I get a little more info? Took down all their information, oh literally gosh, what they're looking awesome. for. And then on top of it, I had, we secret shopped them twice in that month as well. Never heard a phone call, text message, email. So I go to the broker. They were prepared to fire me. And I was like, before you do that, let me just show you this. And I showed them the recording. I gave them that lead, which they ended up closing. And then on top of it, uh, I showed them the secret shopping. And they had just been dishing out the leads to the real estate agents. And most real estate oh. agents, if you don't, you're not paying for the leads, you don't really give a shit, right? That's the truth of the matter. So then they had a whole talk with the real estate. And then it ended up being, they're still a client of mine to this day. They're going to listen to this podcast and laugh when they hear this, uh, this story. So uh, long story short, I realized that. I could keep on trying to do that for every single one of our clients and just be like, no, it's your guys' fault. You guys aren't closing the deals. Or I could figure out a way that I can take that off the agent's hands, charge a little bit more, and then just give them appointments. So we started, so I built what's known as the inner service agent team, an ISA team. And if you're listening to this and you're a real estate agent or a real estate investor or a loan officer or whatever it is, you 100% need to have an ISA team. There's zero reason why, especially because you can get them today for like, I mean, some of them are just like $5 a lead to call the lead. And they do like the ones that we have, they'll do 12 touch points over eight days, call, email, and text. Wow. And they try to find out, are they buyers or sellers? What's their price point? What's their time frame? Are they pre-approved? What are they looking for? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, and once we were able to add that into the process, all of a sudden our conversion started shooting up, right? Uh, we went from like no closings to an average two to 3% closings of the leads that we sent them, which is awesome from real cold traffic yeah, from nobody knowing before. So when people say that leads are shit, which is the case, I, I get it. I really do. The follow-up shit. It's really what it's the follow-up is really, I, I don't care if it's Zillow, realtor.com, Facebook, YouTube, Google, or a referral. It's really honestly comes down to the follow-up. And if you can just have some kind of systemized process in place that you're not even a part of it and you have somebody else doing, even if it's like just an assistant or a third party company doing that qualification process, I have not seen a real estate agent that started using our inner service agent team. That's not just like, this is the best decision. Even if they don't use leads from us, they just use an ISA team, even not our ISA team. Uh, every single one of them is like, this is probably the best thing I ever did for my business. It's funny though, because That's awesome. you would think though that real estate agents are, are so kind of incentivized to call these leads because the commissions are pretty big, yeah, right? Not bad. So here, it's, yeah. It's yeah. pretty funny that they want the money, but they still don't want to call out to do the, the work. Yeah, they exactly. Don't wanna... Do the extra touch points. Yeah. And like the other yeah. numbers we have is our average conversion or, and conversion in the ISA team means conversation to a booked appointment, yeah. right? So our average conversion happens between the sixth and the eighth touch point. So not even like the first five, right? And you guys know the number so like, we give up like the first, yeah, for first few, time. Yeah, exactly. Two times, that's maybe. the thing. Average yeah. real estate. Once again, these are just numbers I have. 1.3 average contact attempts. Like that's what it is for the numbers that we have. So 1.3. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, for sure. And especially if you're getting like online leads because online leads, you can get like one to five dollars lead. So like you have so many coming in that oh. you're just like, oh, call, call, call. No, no, no. All right, I'm on to the next one or whatever it is. Um, They're so, looking for like the ho- ha- low the hanging, low hanging fruit. fruit. They're yeah. looking for the one that's like, yeah, I'll come in okay. tomorrow and sign the papers. Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly what it is. Uh, and then the other thing is when I was going to get the real estate license process myself, right after I've been an advertiser for a while, um, one of the things I learned was just like, there's zero training on sales nope. or follow up or closing Nothing. or rapport building, like zero. Uh, and so once I realized that, that was probably the best thing I did for my advertising agency was open up a real estate brokerage because I got to see the other side of it as well, and it put me on the same level as a lot of people. And uh, when I when I realized that, we even included on in, in top of our program. Now they have what's known as Real to University, which is like live sales training for some of our top real estate agents, like sales scripts, uh, cor- uh, coursework, like how to use like, automations and voicemail drops and all that stuff as well. So we give them sales training on top of our lead generation as well so they can essentially close more deals because that's a win-win Smart. for both of us as well. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're happy because they're actually closing, closing deals. Closing deals, and, yeah. And they're yeah. going to retain and us longer yeah, exactly. because they're clients yeah. of ours. Yeah, it's funny. Um, I heard this from somebody but you've heard of Rocket Mortgage, Quicken Loan. Sure. One of the reasons, I guess, why they're obviously, that guy kills it, but one of the reasons why they kill a lot of people don't know is that when a lead comes into their system, 
I guess they have this proprietary software, something that literally it calls the lead back so fast that any other competitor cannot. So they're like, you know? it's with seconds. So that's the thing is it's like they comes in. It's so fast. Like, so if you're a guy, normal person competing with that, you can't even, it's like, it's like competing with you. If I, yeah. if you guys are calling them and it's some other person gets it, that's the 1.3 you're going to follow up. You're going to lose. And that's the crazy. That's an awesome point because the crazy thing is, is like, okay, you can say, I don't need an assistant. I don't need a team, but everyone who does have that in place, like they're just going to beat you every single time. There's yeah. no way you can compete with a team of people versus by yourself and the other thing as well is that when we talk about like why a lot of leads suck people say that online leads suck i hear it all the time right um online leads don't suck as well not only just for the follow-up but a lot of the companies that you use and i won't say like company names a lot of the big companies you use we are a lead aggregate so we're registered lead sellers to some of these big names so mm -hmm. these big names buy leads from us mm -hmm. then they mark it up and then they resell it to real estate agents all the time. Yep. Uh, so right. it's like the same <laughs> I'm leads. Sure I know who one of them is. Yeah, exactly. So it's the same leads, but they have the brand name. We, we talked about personal branding earlier. One right? of their last they names the could brand... be Tree. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm literally not saying, I'm not saying anything. Uh, but it is like, hilarious oh, like, because they still they're like, oh, the I just like back when I was before I had a team, I was doing my own sales calls, and it was like. Well, you know, these leads are better than Facebook leads, in my opinion. And I was like, well, we sell leads to those people. And they are Facebook leads. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'll promise you that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, once again, it comes – and we integrated the ISA team. And then I started noticing, like, Zillow and, like, a lot of other companies as well started integrating. And now it's – now it's almost uh, – um, What's the word? Even playing field. Yeah, that. for a yeah. lot of people that are using these lead generations, it, it, everyone almost has it by now. So if you're a single agent, you don't have it. I think you're really going to be missing out. And it doesn't matter if you're an agent, an officer, uh, uh, you know, if you're in mortgage or if you have a brokerage. I think it's absolutely critical. You should have somebody doing that that midway touch point in between you and them, especially if you value your time. I mean, for five dollars a lead, you can have somebody do eight days of work for you. I just don't know why you wouldn't do that if you're trying to make money from this. The people that, you know, because I told you we have a, a coaching program as well. The people that do that. They have online platforms that are generating the leads. They have an, a qualification team that's qualifying the leads. So they're just showing up to appointments with people who already know who they are, and they already know all the information about that lead. And so they're literally doing face-to-face -face appointments on a calendar that's already pre-qualified. And imagine what your life would be like if you just showed up to the office every single day and you didn't have to do – which I guess we talked about, not a, they're not even doing it anyway, but you wouldn't have to do the cold calling and the follow-up, whatever it is. You just go in there for what you're great at, what you got into real estate for, what you got into uh, to mortgage for, which is closing the deal and helping people buy and sell homes. Well, I think that's a big issue in the real estate industry in general, just because coming from owning a property management team, a uh, property management company, and doing loans and then working with different agents and brokers, like we're all wearing like six different hats, sure. right? We're all independent contractors, so we have to deal with bookkeeping and accounting if we don't have somebody. We have to deal with bringing in leads. Then we have to call the leads and close the leads. Then you have to go meet the client. Yeah. And then you have to do all the paperwork sure. while you're going through the deal and negotiating it. So it's like, obviously you're gonna suck at at least two or three of those processes. <laughs> if not literally all of them. Right, except for one, maybe. Maybe you're good at one. And so now your business, you're not doing nearly as good as you could because you suck at everything but one thing. And you're doing it all anyway. And our, so our other company, other than Prospect Social, which is the advertising one, Scaling with Systems, is like we essentially work with people to build them up to seven or eight figures. And we do that by essentially identifying what they're great at, what are they wasting time on doing, and then either eliminating, automating, or delegating those things, right? So even if you don't want to do an ISA team and a service agent team, you can also automate voicemail drops, text messages, emails that'll go out automatically as soon as you generate a lead. You don't have to do anything, right? It's attached to your CRM or whatever it is. Um, so... You know, you're probably doing a million things if you're an agent or an officer right now, but one of the things you're probably just not doing a whole lot of and not doing it well is lead generation itself. Because that's the part that's the scariest, right? That's like 80, nobody 20. wants to do 80, that. 20. And nobody wants to do it because you yeah. get rejected in, like yeah. most of the time. So uh, that's why people usually don't want to do it. And so your two options are to not do it and just be an average, what is it, like 60 something percent of agents make less than $40,000 a year. So don't do it and be an average agent or have someone else do it for you. And I'm not even saying like an advertising agency. I'm just hiring somebody to work for you. And if they work, whatever, $5 an hour, $10 an hour, and they generate you one deal a month, so worth it for you. And the time that you have back now, you can invest that back into building your business, working on referrals, whatever else you want to do as well. And it just blows my mind that people don't get that concept. They're like, oh, I'm the best at it, or I'm the only one that can do it, or I don't want to pay the money out. And in reality, if you audit your time over 30 days, you're probably not doing a whole lot of those money generating activities. You're probably spending your time like trying to change colors on your website and updating your social media profile, whatever it is, when in reality, 
you should just be prospecting or have at least have somebody else prospecting for you. Yeah. Do you think, um, I think a lot of people too right now, um, real estate's good, right? So real estate market's good, I think. But when the real estate market dips or things slow down, that's when you guys get more calls for sure. Cause they're sure. like, oh shit, I need to make money. Do you think, um, when people have a team or they don't have a team that they should be trying to do the Facebook, the Instagram ads and do it all themselves and do this? Or do you just, cause you've done this thing yourself, you figured it out, right? So now you know how to go out there and market, bring traffic in, give it to you, qualify it. And here's a lead, go close it, make money. I, you've already proven the model. So it's working for you. It's proven to your customers. Do you think somebody should really go through that or just hire somebody like you and just it's a good question. It just depends, right? So it'll depend based, uh, case by case basis. Um, and we're really lucky in the sense of like, we really only won't work with who we want to work with. Like, you know, we're not begging for business anywhere. So I'll just tell you straight up. I don't think that gener online, generating online leads is that hard. I really don't. It's just not. Yeah. You can do it yourself. You can. It's on YouTube, right? It's free on YouTube right now. Like you can look, type in how to use online ads to generate real estate leads. You can figure it all out. Um, but the, just the question is, are they going to do it is the real question, right? What I've learned is that, and this is both in my coaching program and in this advertising agency, and just really in anything in life, even myself, if I don't pay for something or someone's not paying for something, they usually don't really take it seriously, right? They don't really care about it or they're not going to think it works. I mean, a majority of what you guys do, what I do, what everybody out here charges $100,000 for, you find online for free using Google, right? It's just condensing the information down and having it delivered for you in a done for you package. And follow through too. And follow through in the back end, yeah, and yeah, the back end actual work that has to go yeah. behind it as well. Um, but I'd say like if you are a real estate agent and you feel like I have extra time, go to YouTube right now, type in how do I run Facebook ads for real estate agents, set that up. It'll literally you can do it in an hour. I'm not joking. That's right. So you can do that in an hour, and then you need to call a bunch of different inner service agent teams. Type in ISA team on Google. Find someone that's going to qualify Facebook leads for you, and then connect the Facebook leads to the qualification team. The qualification team is going to connect those leads for you. And I'll say try that for 30 days. And if you don't have at least one interesting conversation from that, then you can talk about hiring somebody else from it. But I, like I mean, that. it's legitimately that's that's, that's, yeah. it's super easy. Those are steps that they can take right now and. Like it's like investing in a lot of other stuff. You think it's super. Well, I can't speak for investing, but a lot of the other stuff I do, you think it's like super hard, and then you do it, and you're like, oh, that was so much easier than I thought, right? And so that's what I tell people as well. So if you've even been considering online ads to to try, I would just say try it out yourself and see what it's like, because that way, at the same time, whenever we work with real estate agents, I can always tell when someone's been running their own stuff versus when somebody is just like total newbie right and we could take them to the cleaners we want to but we're not ever going to do that so it also just helps you be more aware whenever you're speaking to other agencies and you might want someone to run your ads for you that you can be more hyper aware of how everything works rather than just being like i don't know how this goes just please do it and hopefully you send me some leads if somebody is going to hire a company right mm -hmm. like you what are what should they i mean because there's like we said there's a lot of companies that are just not good sure. i think they're just there to take your money and then that's it what should they questions they be asking or looking for how do they know they're going to get like a solid company so i'll probably regret saying everything right here in case people ask us this but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like first thing i would always say is like like, you know, we don't do referral basis uh, because the reason why we don't do referral basis, which I've said this a million times, just because, like I said from before, I've gone through the real estate training process. They don't have any sales training inside of it, right? And, uh, you know, they're all, well, every person is usually working warm referral leads. And as you guys know, a warm referral lead and a cold lead from online, two completely different approaches oh, to yeah. it, right? Two totally different tonalities, everything. And so if you've only been working one way and then we give you these other leads and I'm having to trust that you're going to, call these people, follow up with these people, close these people, whatever it is. Now I'm putting my salary, my team salaries, everyone's families at risk because I don't know if you're going to do your job to close a deal. So we personally don't do ref uh, commission based, like referral based. When you close, you'll pay us. But that's something if I was a real estate agent and I'm looking on the other side, I would try to find somebody to do that, right? That's better than having to pay an upfront flat fee because uh, you're not losing anything out of pocket. So if you can do that, I would do that. Second thing I would look for is do they have an inner service agent team? Do they have some way to qualify the leads? Never take a straight a cold lead from online. I just, you, you're going to regret it later on. And it's actually super affordable to get someone else to qualify it for That's you. Cool. Uh, so definitely have an inner service agent team in between the cold leads and you. And then the third and final thing is just to get in business is like, hey, what are two or three referrals? And let me talk to them on the phone. What bothers me when I'm on calls with agents or officers, whatever it is, is, you know, people are afraid to just say no. And instead they say, what's your website? Let me get referrals. And so I go through that whole process and then I talk to my referrals and nobody ever called them in the end, right? So only ask referrals if you're actually 
you're serious about it and you're a step away from buying. Um, I think that's just good business. But yeah, if you can do all three of those things and they have a proven track record. And then the final thing I'll just tell for agents and officers listening to this right now, I don't know what the average real estate transaction cycle in the United States is, but it can't be shorter than three months. I'm sure it's like five to six months in the United States for a tr- real estate transaction cycle from a cold lead to like commission Done. check in that person's hand. Yeah. I mean, I would say probably six months. So one of the biggest issues that I see out there Agents who have no money are putting their last dollar and dime. Like we, our team is trained to stay away from those people, right? Because it's like the warrior, their last resort. And if you don't have any money, there's probably a reason before you're working on this that you don't have any money in the first place, right? So like we try to say like, look, it's going to be a three to six month process before you're going to really start be cashing in checks on this. So like, you understand this is going to be monthly for the next three months and then it's going to start hitting, right? Because once again, you're dealing with super warm referral leads and it's not very consistent. So your pipeline's not that filled. So we're starting with no pipeline. We have to build the pipeline up and then slowly they're going to start. And then like three, four, five, six months down the line, then you're doing 30, 40, 50 grand months from commission checks that are hitting from those first three months. But unfortunately it's not, this isn't just real estate agents. I'm guilty of this as well. We live in a society. It's like, you know, what is it? Six minute abs and like 30 second, you know, dinner or whatever it is. So it's like, you want everything right now. And unfortunately, especially like online digital products. Yeah. You can get your money back instantly that same day, but real estate, you have a whole transaction cycle that's going to happen from it. So before you sign up with somebody, I would say whatever they're going to charge you monthly, multiply that by six and be totally ready to not make a dollar for that six months from that investment. Um, and if you can do that comfortably, then I would say you should move forward with them. That's fair. I like that. That's yeah. really good. Yeah. Cause I, I, I do agree with you. I think people always say that leads suck and then they don't call the leads and then they feel like they wasted their money. And then they're like talking bad about you afterwards exactly. and saying like what a scam it was when really, you know, they were missing pieces to the puzzle. And, and they're I think getting they're, tr- up. they're trying to qualify yeah. the lead themselves. I like that because you do try. I used to call these like back in the day, but then you're trying to like, when I first, first got in the business, but then you're trying to qualify them and then you get the stack and it's overwhelming. It's like if somebody go, hey, this is what you want. Here it is. It's worth it because if you're calling, it's more warm than cold, right? A hundred percent. And then the other thing is like the people that stop, like, you know, we used to do month to month contracts. Now our minimum is three months just because it was like, it's not I enough. try to set the expectations of like, it needs to be three months. And they'd be like, yeah, yeah, I got it. And then end of the month one, they're like, what's the deal? Like, you know, we only had one closing. Exactly. They freak month. out. Yeah. So like the, uh, that's the thing that I hate as well. It's just like a lot of people will give up right before it hits. So like if you end the first month and you don't make any money, well, you lost all that money you already invested inside of it. And then now you have to start back from zero again with somebody else. And I do understand that it's super scary because it's like, am I going further down the hole of something that's not going to return something or is it going to return something? And that's why it's smart to do your homework as well. And that also is why it's beneficial to maybe learn how to do it yourself. So you can kind of get an idea you know, like there's a few things in my life that I learned how to do first. I, I saw the value in it and I saw how it works. And then I just hired somebody else to do it once I understood it. Then I could, if you can do it yourself, you can understand what expectations are, right? right? If you do it with somebody else, then they're just telling you what to expect and you have no idea what to expect. And that's the hard part because I think with marketing is I was never a believer in marketing. I like literally, I'm, I'll buy a property, but I will not want to invest any money in marketing because I feel like. I'm going to lose that money. Sure. It's like I'm putting it all on like roulette, putting it like playing roulette or something. And it's like 50, 50 shot. Who knows what <laughs> I'm going to end up with because a lot of people do go in and they spend a lot of money on marketing and they don't get anything back. So if you try it at least yourself, then at least you know what questions to ask. And I'll tell you what. So we talked about 10 X and Grant Cardone and like one of the big things he said a 10x, which my roommate and I, uh, we just talk about all the time, is like there's not always going to be a clear and direct ROI from it, right? So like for us, especially our personal brands, like we sp- put six figures a year behind just like putting out information and content out there that is there's no direct call to action to it. It's just like I want more people to know about us and our brand or whatever it is. And like you just have to have a longer term mindset in the sense of like, you know, even if you do online ads and you don't close somebody from it. Let's say you, uh, average cost per thousand people uh, on Facebook, if you're doing real estate marketing, is about $20. So if you spend two grand, you know, whatever the number that is, 100,000 people are going to see your name, your face, your brand, your f- Instagram, your Facebook, whatever it is. So even if they don't directly buy right then and there that month from you, they're now in their kind of ecosphere as well. And so that's why it's nice to have like stuff like this uh, podcast going on as well. So if you guys coupled, you know, your advertising side of it as well. And then they come in and they see that, oh, they, let me Google it or then look at them on YouTube. And then they see this. Now they're cons- like caught into your organic content, which you guys do a lot of great organic content as well. So as real estate agents, 
and I know I'm saying stuff because I just had to talk about the marketing side. I know in real estate, there's like the whole, you know, you got to take them around the to different homes. You got to, you know, do the financing, you got to do the paperwork. So I, I have very much recognized that I'm just speaking to one part of the real estate process. And like, that's why it might be beneficial to hire it out. But there is a right way to do it, in my opinion. Um, and But no matter what, right or wrong, you should be doing something, I think, in the lead generation online advertising We get that space. question all the time. People are like, oh, so you guys are doing the social media stuff. Like, how's it going? Are you Have you, like, actually made, made money? money. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but I can't say this guy called me up and I closed this deal. It's like, no. Like you said, somebody listens to the podcast and then they go like, oh, but then I looked at a couple of your YouTube videos and those were really good. So now you've built that trust and that rapport. They kind of know who you are. They feel like they – people literally call us sometimes we've never met and they talk to us like we're friends because mm-hmm. now they've seen you on Instagram and they've heard you talk on your podcast and they found out that they have things in common with you like through just random stuff, whether it's like working out or – vacationing or whatever travel whatever so it, it is like we tell people that all the time you have to just do it without any expectation that you're going to make money off of it that's, that's it's so not well one said. of those things yeah i mean when we went into it we just said we're going to do this podcast we're going to spend this money and we're not going to make any money back and we're just going to do it for a year and we were talking a lot before obviously we got into the pocket about a bunch of different stuff but um it's like and we're like let's just see how this goes we didn't even have a plan or anything we're just like kind of just jump in the water and just start swimming and i think sometimes like you said that's the best thing to do and then now we're like oh wait a minute this thing worked at this little rinky dink level that we did and some people to them like wow this is monumental we're like in this space it's rinky dinky but now we realize you can hit the gas easily but it works and i think a lot of people understand too is that they understand the brand like you said is if you're getting leads or you're not and somebody looks you up online and they talk to me or you and you got this brand they can't find me they might just even though i might be better and i'd be more seasoned they're going to see all your content like well this guy seems like more professional he's out there i'm just going to go with you and i think people don't realize that's really that does huge work. That, so huge but so if you're not going to do ads or anything at least you should you should be spending time in your brand 100 yeah. and that's another thing youtube I was or blog posts or whatever it is as well like it's crazy how much people and it even becomes more impressive when like you set up a barrier so like now people, at least in like my coaching program, they don't even speak to me until after they've already paid to get inside my program as well. So they're telling my sales guys, oh, I found Ravi from YouTube and I looked him up on there and they're still giving up, you know, money and then they get to come speak to me and then they get to tell me in person as well, which is I think another level above what we're talking about is right now. And that's just because for the past two years, I've been putting out YouTube videos, blog posts, Instagram, Facebook, back when just like the podcast you said in the beginning was like all rinky dink, back when no one was liking it, commenting it, nobody knew who the hell I was. And in the beginning, if you don't have that long-term mindset that you're like, this is going to pay off one day or whatever it is, then uh, then it's easy, really easy to quit in the beginning. And the other thing that I learned as well is you guys might not have like tens of thousands of, of subscribers to this uh, to the podcast or listeners to this, whatever it is. But, you know, I'd rather have 1,000 die-hard avid fans than 10,000 of just like, oh, yeah, I think I listen to them every once in a while, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely a bigger impact on that. And people care about numbers and followers and and whatever it is. But if you guys have just like – and we talked about keeping it local in the San Diego area and whatever it is. Like I think that's so cool if you guys can – that's a niche within a niche in my opinion as well. But, yeah, I could not tell you – and we talked about – Two things I'll say. Right before we got on here, we talked about somebody. We talked about what they did, and we said that it's not that great at what they do. But people are giving them so much money doing it just because of their brand as well. So, like, a lot of the stuff that I do, I'm not even the best at it in the world. Like, I'm really not. I'll admit some of the stuff that we do. But I'm the one that's investing the most into being known the most out there, right? And that's the – and you can either be one or two people. You can be the person that – complains that the person's not the best and they're just the best known or you can be the person that's just the best known right and then do your best to provide a good service to people uh so i would like no matter what you do it doesn't matter if you're planning on doing real estate your whole life or if you want to pivot to something else that's the beautiful thing about a personal brand and content is like you know i had my advertising agency for two years and it was really incredible we've been on fox news been on a bunch of different articles and and magazines for it and because i was building my personal brand doing that whenever i shifted into my new consulting company scaling with systems 
it was a very easy transition. I already had super warm audience of everyone that was like wanting to buy from me. So our first year in that was absolutely incredible. Well, you did so great in your advertising that they're like, he's going to crush it over and here. This as well. Exactly. Yeah. So they're learning how to do it. So like if you can do that as an agent or whoever it is, like start building your personal brand. And I think a lot of people get super overwhelmed. Like, do I do a podcast? Do I do a YouTube? Do just I do, do something. Just do something. Yeah. Uh, we're Here's like, a pick one thing yep. and just start with that. And then once you do that, maybe you can start tacking on more things. I One of the things that I see a lot too with people in real estate is because they're more entrepreneurial. entrepreneurial they're like, okay, well, in order to be a millionaire, like all millionaires have like at least 10 different streams of income. I've heard this so many times. So then they're like at step one and they're like right this minute trying to create 10 different Street. streams. Like, <laughs> you can't do that. Get good at one thing and then start doing something else and then start adding a little thing over here. So I mean, look, 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 look at the brand. And it's funny. I wanted to go back to this one thing you said is, um, you know, I always go back to the jab, 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 right hook. Sure. And I really, when Gary was talking, I was like, what is he talking about? And now that I'm, you know, and you've been doing this long enough, you're like, you're just talking about, it. you're like, I jabbed for two years, gave, gave, not even gave. You actually then invested money to give away, you're giving away stuff, then you invested money so you could reach more, more people. people Everybody's like, why would you do this? You're like, because eventually I'm going to give a knockout punch and here's my product and here's what I'm going to do. And now you're winning. And everybody's just like, they want to throw one jab and then I'm going to hook the rest of the time like it's not winning. And that's like, you see people like on, um, I see people on Instagram, they don't really post much, but they're like, Call me if you want to sell your home. And then you go through that. And I'm like, sometimes I'm like, let me look. I'm like, call me if you want to sell your home. Next, call me if you're. No, just all is ass. Every post yeah. is an ass. But what is, but what am, who am I calling? Like, you're just going to sell my home. I don't even know who you are. I don't yeah. know anything about you. Are you good at it? Are you bad at it? Like, and so with us, is like the same thing is, is we're getting to the phase where we're like jabbing, jabbing. And like Gary said, if jab as long as you can. And now I get it because when you go to hook, this has been built up so Huge. much. It's like, whoosh. yeah, it's insane yeah. what can happen from it. Yeah. I think that personal branding is like, and we just held a mastermind here in San Diego in La Jolla actually a few weeks ago. And the, the, the first day we, we walked up there, there's 60 people there and awesome. we're at this house and it was like, what do you want to learn? And we had a whiteboard and we wrote everything down. And that's when I talked about if you're building a program, why you should just ask people what they want rather than building it. Cause it was not what I thought that people wanted to talk about. So I was happy I didn't have to create a presentation, but the first whole day, uh, 14 hours was personal branding. So it's unbelievable. people want to know more about it and it's super interesting. And like, you know, people hear the word personal branding and they think like, I have to be attractive. I have to be funny. I have to be smart. I have a million to be followers. outgoing. I have to have a million followers, whatever it is. And you're the thing, like everyone who has a million followers, they started at zero. And uh, I already said it, but like, I'd rather have less followers and people that care about me than a bunch agree. of people that are just, I have no idea who I am. So um, yeah, personal branding has been, it's gotten me on the news. It's gotten me, uh, helped me launch multiple companies. It's got me business partnerships. Uh, it's gotten me client partnerships as well. And I it mean, gets it's, you in front of people. It gets you in front of so many people. And then the crazy thing was, it's actually... It's so funny. Once again, at 10X last year, by the way, Grant Cardone, I hope you can sponsor this podcast. As well. <laughs> uh, at 10X last year, I went to an event after the uh, 10X. I was like a house party in Miami. And everyone was like, oh, what's your name? I was like, oh, I'm Ravi. Nice to meet you. Oh, yeah. What's your Instagram handle? Which everyone asked me for my Instagram handle. And back then I had, so this was whatever, 2018, uh, October. I forgot when 10X was. But uh yeah, literally around this time. Yeah. Oh, it was February. It was like yeah. Exactly yeah, 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 a year yeah, yeah. ago. Almost. Oh, it was a year Crazy, ago. So, yeah, right? that was February. Super Bowl weekend. Yeah, hello. <laughs> that's that's like, where it was. Here. Yeah, that's where it was, yeah. Super Bowl weekend. So and, funny. Uh, I was like, what's your Instagram? And I had 1,100 followers on Instagram at that wow. time. Wow. And everyone is like, what's your Instagram? What's your Instagram? What's your? And I'm like, and it, I could see disappointment in their eyes and they pulled up my Instagram and I had 1,100 and no content on there, whatever it was. And that, and I was really starting to get into like the online like personal branding space. And that was when I was like, okay, like, I need to invest more time and energy in this because no one's saying, hey, what's your business card or what's your business or whatever, whatever it is, right? It's like, hey, what's your Instagram? And uh, so then I started investing heavy. I met a gentleman named Paul Getter. Shout out to Paul. I spoke at a real estate, actually it was a real estate event in New Jersey. Uh, I spoke at a real estate event in New Jersey and he was on stage with me and I had heard of him and he had heard of me. So we went to dinner afterwards and I told him everything about what I was doing. And he's like, you need to be mi investing minimum $120,000 a year into your personal brand, whether that's online advertising, whether that's paid shout outs, whatever it is. He's like minimum $120,000 a year inside of it. And I was like, yeah, that's a little scary to invest. In. And I was like, you know, whatever this guy, you know, he spends about 15 million a month on Facebook and you, and he runs ads for, he runs Terrible. ads for Grant Cardone, Ty Lopez, yeah. Tony Robbins. I'm like, wow. forget it. Like, this is a good piece of advice. I'm going to take this. And so I started doing it. 
And like, so right now I have a, about a hundred thousand Instagram followers, uh, and I have a Facebook group and a bunch of other stuff, YouTubes, uh, YouTubes, YouTube. And, um, it has paid off a million times over again. Right. And there's not that always clear and direct ROI, but I think people have personal brand as like a secondary thing, like, uh, it'll grow on its own or whatever it is. But if you can bring that to the forefront of like your, what you think and what you do, and then there's a bunch of auxiliary benefits. So like when I speak on stages, one of the first things I do is I say, uh, first slide is always who wants a free ticket to this event. Follow me on Instagram and uh, tag me in your story. And uh, I'll pick whoever tagged me in their story. I'll choose one person. I'll buy your flight here and your ticket to this event. So when I go speak events, hundreds of people are sharing me on their stories, right? And that blows up my brand on there. And the cool part about it, because a lot of people don't know this, and you guys are getting into the advertising, so I'll just tell you, there's like an audience you can choose on Facebook for people that engage with your Instagram or your Facebook for the past 365 days. So for free, when I'm speaking at this event, I literally get everyone there who's my target market and everybody who's their friend, who's probably also my target market, because you know birds of a feather flock together, to go to my Instagram, and as soon as they do that, they're mine as far as targeting is concerned for the next 365 days. So that I can run traffic to super warm traffic or to super warm audiences that already know who I am. So the goal Smart. is just to build up a personal brand large enough that people are being attracted to you, and then if you leverage like a paid advertising side of it, and I know we're kind of getting on a tangent out of real estate, but nice. I just thought this was valuable. And then if you leverage like a paid advertising side of it, you can just, you had said, talked about hitting the gas pedal this year. Like if you hit gas, like, so every podcast we get on top of, and I'll, this is exciting, I guess I didn't tell you guys this, when you guys send me the link to it or whatever, my, my creative director will create a snippet and then I'll run paid traffic to that. And it's actually going to be paid traffic to your guys' podcast. It's not even anything to do with me. So I'm Thanks running, for that. Yeah. <laughs> but that's exactly the point, though, because yeah. then it's like then more people are seeing me and learning about me. Right, so and you get some of our audience, too. Well. It's like a mutual A win-win, exactly. They're going to be like, I need to hire this guy for leads. Yeah, or whatever it is. Yeah. And so I take your guys' stuff, and I, I promote stuff over there, and there's no call to action or anything to it, but we invest crazy into my personal brand as well. And the cool thing is, is if your company leverages your personal brand, it's all a business expense like we had talked about in the beginning as well. So it just helps you if you're real estate, and you don't know if you want to stay real estate in your office, or you don't know if you want to stay inside of it. It doesn't matter. Just build a personal brand about who you are and what you do and like eventually it's going to kick in and help you out in the long run but i would hate to be the person that just thinks it's not going to help them and then 20 years later they're watching the other people that are just like absolutely crushing it and they're like they're not even good at what they do they're just popular nope they're great at it yeah, I was yeah. Like, well okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like a... we um you ever heard of ricky Cruth? i don't think so okay no. so ricky Cruth. why i say this is um we had him on he's a guy out of uh alabama, alabama. And he's this does this free real estate coach, Very but cool. he's amazing. And he's this whole thing is um, and shout out to Ricky, um, transactions over relationships, and Re so relationships over relationships over transactions. <laughs> sorry. And so we had him on the podcast, and he went to the 4D. So I ended up like finding him online, and then I just said, hey, you want to come on? And I didn't know, so we got him on. He's like, yeah, basically, I'm giving away all the free coaching. He closed 100 homes a year, makes a million bucks there, and he's already doing there. good. Yeah, and he's like. Yeah. I spent all this time, give everything away, and I pay $150,000, $200,000 to build my brand. And at first, I was like, hmm. And he was like at 8,000 followers. And then I've watched, and I, that's why I watched him. I'm like, I really want to watch this. So now, year, he, now he's probably getting close to 300,000 followers. Oh my gosh. He's now, he's, and it was funny. He was like, yep, I'm going to start always going to give it away for free and they're just going to start paying me to speak. And I was like, okay, let's see. And then now he's starting to fly all over and speak. And then he's blowing up. And I'm like, and basically people that are paying coaching are all of a sudden going, I was paying, now I'm going over here. And it's this whole thing is flocking. Like you said, the, what you just said is everybody's starting to come over here. And I realize I'm like, it works. Do you know who Andy Carter is? That sounds so familiar. He's a, he's pretty big in the real estate investing side of it as well. And okay. he has a podcast and he's down in OC. So okay. I drove down just like this, reached out, was connected. I drove, actually I spoke at an event with him and then I was like, I'd love to get on your podcast. And uh, I drove down to Orange County just like this. He reminds me so much of you guys, but exactly what you said you did and what the gentleman you were just talking about, Ricky as well, and he did the same thing. Went to Gary Vee. Gary Vee was like, give away all of your best shit for free for a year. And he was like, ah, fuck it. Why not? I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> so he was nobody a year and a half ago. Uh, and now he has a few hundred thousand followers on Instagram, a few hundred thousand subs on YouTube. He's huge. I mean, I was lucky enough to be on his podcast. I was super, super grateful for it. And if you're listening to this, shout out to Andy. He's a great guy. Um, but the exact same thing. Like, you know, and so I see a lot of that in you guys as well in the sense of like you're, you're seeing these other people that are saying the exact same stuff. It's like, yeah, we invested in this. 
I didn't see anything for a year or two years, but then it hit really big. So you guys are gonna do the exact same thing, and like we're gonna look back on this podcast like a year and two la- years later, and you're like, oh my god, remember when we sat down and talked about this, and you guys are like a million subs. You can't now, cause like I mean, because of the space that we're in, like especially like apartments and multifamily, you have a lot of like an older generation, sure. the younger generations coming in, but they don't believe in all of the social media and things, and so it's it's like one of those things now. I don't think anybody can deny. That if they're not on social media, like they're just like not living on this planet almost. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's wild. It's funny to me too, because even in this business, people ask me all the time, like for my business card, you were saying that. I'm like, business card, I have them. I have them. But yeah, I feel like, like I don't know where they are. I don't I, know where mine are. <laughs> awesome. And I was like, what do you do with a business card? I throw them away. hundred percent of the time. People give me their business card and then I throw it away. Cause I'm like, what am I gonna do Did with it? Did you guys it? hear that? Your business cards go on the <laughs> trash. Away. Like, yeah. It's sad. And then we talk about getting like People will spend months deciding what's the coolest and best business card like yes. because that's like the easy thing to do as well. Or it's just like create a – the business card is your Instagram and it is your Facebook. It, it is. is your YouTube, right? So like if you can just create something cooler on there and put a little more energy in that, yeah. And then once again, imagine if you instead of getting the business card and maybe it's not the right environment to ask for a phone number, you say, hey, follow me on Instagram, shoot me a message. Follow you on Instagram, shoot you a message, boom. Now – they're in your sphere. You can shoot them a message on Instagram. It's not as personal as asking for a phone number, so it's not as intrusive. And then if you're doing your content right, content, 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 value, 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 and then a testimonial of somebody you've helped that has absolutely crushed it. And then finally they're like, all right, let me just work with you on the end for it as well. So, yeah, business cards are – Literally, I heard something the other day. It was like, "Can I oh, yeah, let me get your business card?" I was like, oh, "I don't even have business cards." He's like, "Yeah, neither do I." I was like, well, "Why'd you ask for mine then? Like, you're not even gonna, you'll never call me on it." I literally think it's it's just like an automatic. <laughs> it is. It is like, like a re- default like, response to people. Yes. What's your business card? Yes. Right? And I'm younger, so I didn't grow up necessarily in the time that that was like a thing. But uh, and I remember when I first started. That's my like company. an eight track to you. Yeah. You're like, what? <laughs> I remember when I first started my company, I was so excited to get them. And I still have two years ago the whatever thousand, you know, I got a special on it, right? Like Thirty five dollars. Different for a address you don't live anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like a different phone number. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's so funny. Uh but yeah, everything's digital, everything's moving digital. And if you can just create content on there, and I I know Gary Vee talked about it and I was I was discussing this in my company the other day as well. It's like in the beginning it's just quality or quantity over quality, right? So you yeah. guys have a, a kick ass, like I was just saying, this the studio is incredible. The setup here is nice. You guys have a whole team full time working to make this happen for you. And I have the exact same thing it. back at my house. But the thing is, is that the first year and a half I was doing this, literally just my iPhone, I was doing selfie videos like that. And people were making fun of me and the audio was shit. And I didn't even know what I was talking about half the time, but I was just pumping out content. Yeah. Right. And then, like, you can see back, like I get the memories uh, this day, last year, two years ago, right. I can see the kind of stuff that I was doing. Um, and it's hilarious. But I think the other thing that stops people is like, I got to get a videographer. I got to have microphones like these. I got to have a nice camera, whatever it is. And ironically enough, it's like, those are all literally just limiting beliefs and excuses that you're feeding yourself right now. So you don't have to be uncomfortable enough to put your phone out, say something to a camera and then post it out on your online. And also you have to just be you because like we had some guys in here um, that he like, uh, this guy that was on Tim Ferriss's podcast, Very he cool. came over to his house, sat on his couch. He was Tim like, Tim Ferriss, you know, he's yeah, like, like he's so, no, no, he went to no, Tim Ferriss. Oh my God. Janky little like, Tim Ferriss so is like, it's mellow. Oh yeah, Tim yeah. Ferriss is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, that's his know, vibe. Zen, and like, he doesn't care. Like, we want to see it has, like this. He I mean, people care. watch Joe his Rogan podcast and Ferriss is like, it's exactly. ridiculous. It's yeah. like, yeah, so I think it's all a vibe too. And there's a girl I follow, um, that I love Jenna Kutcher. She's like, she's oh yeah, still, Jenna Kutcher, yeah. Dude, she podcasts in her closet. Yeah. With <laughs> Isn't she in San Diego or what? Where is no, she? okay. she's like. Um, Did she hold an event recently in San Diego? I think so because she's okay. doing that whole mastermind thing. That's with exactly Nate what Grazio it was. I had a client of mine go to it. That's why I remember it. Yeah. yeah, and I think they're like in Hawaii sometimes, and okay. Colorado maybe other times, but. Anyways, she's still to this day, and that girl is, like, crushing it. She could have a full-on studio if she wanted, but she's still doing it from her cell phone. So I think no matter how big or small you are, like, do you? And if you don't have the money to start, that's just, like, another cop-out. And and I think that people even relate more to the authentic. Even my creative director, who I pay him to walk around and video me, a lot of times he's like, nah, shoot this on your phone, right? It's just people respond to it better on your phone as well. So there's benefits to being authentic and stuff like that. I mean, this stuff is nice, and I love this kind of stuff as well. Don't be wrong, but a lot of the times, if you've been in it long enough, like, I mean, look at Gary Vee's stuff. Like, you know, 
uh, most of his stuff on his really Instagram raw. and his live super raw. None of it's edited. Grant Cardone, one of his most viewed videos on YouTube is him uh, at a gym working out, talking, like sweating, pouring like, down sweat, literally setting his phone, his phone shaking, he's deep, deep breathing, the audio shit, hundreds of thousands of, of views on YouTube. So it's just like, it's so crazy. And I look back every once in a while, we do an audit on my social media with my creative director and we're just like, what is working with our, what's re- resonating with our audience? And I'll say seven times out of 10 is nothing to do with, uh, none of the edited videos, no. none of the professional videos. It's always like me just being super true and authentic. And the other thing I'll say, I posted, I, I did an email blast and I posted across all my social media profiles yesterday because the night before I did a 14 hour day and then I had dinner by myself at an Indian restaurant, right? So I'm India, I'm Indian, my dad's from India. Oh, cool. I just spent 20 days or, or 14 days there uh, in December. And um, I was eating at an Indian restaurant by myself and I just made a post while I was there about how most people always want to be with other people and like talk with other people. They always have to be around other people, drinking, whatever it is. And like I, ch- I was challenging people to be alone more and like be by yourself and like listen to your own thoughts. And like it's scary, but that's where your best personal development it's my comes from. My favorite thing to do. I, I agree 100%. Like yeah. literally, I eat, I traveled Colombia, Spain. I was by myself the entire that's time. So awesome. I like, didn't know anybody over there. And so I was, and I was like, I literally been eating Indian food. My hands are dirty. I'm like typing this up and I just like sent it out. And I was like, uh, whatever, not a big deal. I wake up the next morning, inbox is flooded, Instagram DMs flooded, stories are, and I'm just like, it's just, the the point of that story is that you also think you might know what people want to see and hear, and like, if you're not always just like pushing out content, you'd be surprised what people actually resonate with. Almost all the times where I'm like, I spend so much time and energy in this content and post in this email, it took me hours, I put you're it like, out it's there, you get nothing. crickets, <laughs> and then it's hell? like, I'm like eating, I got curry in my hands, like typing a thing, and then, and then all of a sudden it's viral like that, yeah. so it's just crazy how that works as well, so the bottom line of the whole story is that you you don't know, you I don't try. know, and no, you guys don't know what's going to work and what's not going to work, it's just go out there, we call, call, call it imperfect action, just go out there, post some stuff, see what works, and just try to post more stuff like that. Yeah, and honestly, I don't even think I've, uh, I don't think I'm like, perfected or even learned because people go oh, you do, I, I don't have a big following and I'm like I don't even think I perfected what it is out there I just put content out there and other strategy but sometimes I'm like you're you're like you said you're figuring out but I mean I know people like oh I got this strategy I'm like I don't even care I just put stuff out there how I feel and if it's going to grow slow it's fine I'm not worried about it like I just I like the podcast that we do about this we get to sit in front of people meet you like we had a great conversation before we went on yeah. um that was you guys missed that itself. yeah, yeah. yeah that was a- <laughs> it's really good we we're talking about a lot of different things and like our our you know our passion is is really why i like this is that we we're talking about robert kiyosaki and the tom wheelwright is that um like you came in here and most of the time it's like look if you're young especially now i would i want to get like your generation for your start and it's like you're starting to make money then you're like Oh shit! What do I do? Do with it. Like there's taxes, there's stocks, there's this, there's that. It's like maybe this will work for you, but we went through that too. And there's this path. That's the way that we really believe. You know, that's why Tom Wheelwright writes uh, wealth free tax or whatever sure, the yeah. book is. Tax free wealth, yeah. Tax free yeah, yeah. wealth, and so. I think for us, that's the message that we really want to bring. And we believe it's through buying multifamily property um, like Grant Cardone or Robert Kiyosaki. But I think people just need to figure out what is your passion and ours is real estate. And our big thing now is the generational wealth. And it's funny, we were doing, um, I think you'll kind of, so we, we locked ourselves in that, you know, the fishbowl over there when yeah, you walked I saw in that, yeah. for two days with the brand builder lady. And for me to sit still for two days, I'm surprised they didn't have to drug me. But <laughs> um, so we're in there and she's like, okay, the first thing you need to do is uh, what's your, uh, what is it? What's, what's the problem you're solving, right? And I'm like, no, we do lunch real. No, that's not a problem. We're like, I'm like, shit, how long is this going to take? You know, <laughs> but an hour later, 30 minutes later with Crystal Monty and I were like, we came up with, we, what we're solving is insecurity. We're solving that right now is like you're in your age, you're starting to make money, you wanna buy real estate, you wanna buy a home, you wanna do this, and you're like, I gotta do financing, what about the manager, what about this? It's like, holy shit, what is all this stuff? But really what we're doing is, is we're, we're just taking an insecure person and basically whether it's you're gonna buy or this or that and we're just trying to help you through this process. And we've already been on the other side. And today somebody said in a podcast, it was, um, Ray Dalio, you know, he is principles sure. genius. Yeah, of course. He said, and he said, in my opinion, until you've done something three times, then you haven't done it. Very you, cool. you, cause if you've done something three times, you either made a mistake or you've done it right three times, then you've figured out how to do it until then. Don't tell me you know how to do something. 
So I was like, that's very interesting. So I think in our space and even like you is like one of the first things is, so it's cool. We went through this whole two days of learning about what our business is, what we're trying to preach, who we are. So now we have a solid package of who we are, what we're trying to do. So when we start building content and everything, we just keep going back to the stuff that we spent two days in the room. Your brand voice is essentially what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. If there's like consistency across all platforms and across all content, whatever you're doing with that. And that's super cool. You guys did it with the brand builders and like locked in. For me, it was like, I didn't even, it was just like naturally evolved over time. Right. Yep. I didn't know what it was. And then like, I started realizing what it was. So it's very cool that you guys did in the beginning. And I'm sure even that'll change over time as you guys. It does. Uh, and yeah. that's what they say too. Yeah. Well, they call it like the she hands wall too. Like, so you start out in a niche, right? Like you real estate advertising and then you build up after that your foundation is like solid you have people who you've already kind of like believe in you following you all this and now you can sell you know how to scale your business or you can do coaching coaching or you can do all these other things so you start there and then it starts kind of evolving evolving from that as well over time yeah I'm honestly and like you just said a second ago like it's so especially in real estate multifamily investing like you know I know a bunch of people that are my age that are making money online and it's like you don't know what to do with it or how to do it as well and there's so much information out there but it's not really condensed down at all Um, and also like you said before you have this huge gap in my opinion between the multifamily let's just say gods right that are in there and that know how it works and want to help people but they're not on social media and they don't have a personal brand whatever it is and then you have these younger guys and gals that are on social media they made all their money from social media and so there's like that they can't connect together and so if you guys can be that connection point where you guys are either connecting with them or you guys are that la- the the people they're investing with or teach them how to invest i see a an, a tremendous amount of value in it right like everyone i talk to because even so when i first first doing this syndication deal he was like all right can you get this amount of money like and i was like yeah i was like actually i have a few other people that are probably would be down too like and they're like okay so i call up six people and like within 30 minutes i had six people all at like a six-figure buy-in for this yeah. thing and because they're just like yeah real estate i heard it's good right they have no <laughs> idea yeah. like me too i have no idea either I'm like yeah i think that's what we're supposed to yeah. do so we ended up doing it so and when there was literally when i did that and also obviously it's because they trust me but when i did it, i was like nobody no nobody in my area or my sphere or whatever it is really knows anything about it and i that was when i first recognized that huge gap because the gentleman that we're working with now is syndication he's incredibly successful no personal brand whatsoever no social media nothing so i'm like so i'm telling these guys are about to give me six figures like yeah yeah this is the guy and oh what's his instagram <laughs> i'm like no no no, no 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 let me just get you on a call with him because like you look at his instagram you're gonna say no right in the beginning um and we go back to people like oh if they care about my instagram i don't want to do business with them well like okay fine you can be that person or you can just invest a little time and energy in that like what you guys are doing right now and building that up and it's in uh, I, I'm excited for you guys. Honestly. Well, we tell it's people, super cool. it's funny because we meet with people like you, for example, and we're like, okay, we can teach you all about how to buy apartments and how to invest. And then we're going to learn from you because you sure. have a lot of good shit that you know about. We, our conversation about before this. was like, I'm <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. like a dog drooling over here. Like, this <laughs> yeah, is awesome. Yeah. I mean, we got some good nuggets from you. And plus, you know, your generation's younger and you view how you approach things and view is different because we, when I grew up, um, when I was young, the shit that you had, it wasn't there. You know, our world was moving. Oh, you want to learn something? Cool. Take, your mom takes you down and drops you all this thing called the library. <laughs> then you go to the lady and you get this little card reader and go, hey, I want this book. Let's go to the G's. Okay, it's an E4020. You're like, what? Now you're like, boom, yeah. in five seconds. Yeah. I mean, this is the shit we dealt with when we were kids, you know? We had fax machines and VCRs <laughs> dad, and pagers. I was lucky pagers. enough when I was growing up, my dad used to always just be like, I wanted to spell something. I like, Dictionary, uh, dictionary, yeah. dictionary, dictionary, dictionary. Yeah. Sorry, and then when I was studying, so my story before I got into all this was I was going to law school, right? That was my whole oh, goal. All wow. of life was to be a lawyer. And so I, I graduated from college and I decided I had, a, I had a law school essentially consultant that was like, because I want to go to the top five law school in the nation. And he was like, if you want to get to the top five law school, you either spend a year studying for the LSAT, the law school admission test. It's the biggest thing that determines it. I'm like, all right. So I graduate college. And I'm like, the next year is going to be spent solely to studying for law school. And uh, three days after I graduated, my dad got diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. He lived in Atlanta. I was in Florida. And he didn't have anyone to take care of him. So I ended up, right when I unpacked my car in Florida, packed it back up, moved up to Atlanta. And it just brings me up because you said library. And so for the next year, I spent pretty much six days a week at chemo and radiation with him. And then I would go to the public library at the end of the day and sit in that li- library all day Jeez. long. And it is insane to me because... Yeah, <laughs> like I didn't recognize that. And like you said in the beginning, if someone should do online ads or not, should they as a real estate agent? 
look, if this was 15 years ago, yeah, you probably should hire somebody else, right? Because there's no way you're going to learn how to do this right now. But now we live in a time, and I noticed at the library when people are coming in there, of course, no one that's coming in there is under the age of 80. So it's like, I'm, yeah. I'm the yeah. youngest guy there, right? <laughs> Studying for law school. And uh, it's just crazy to me when people make excuses that they don't know stuff or they don't understand stuff or whatever it is. And it's something that should be one of the core competencies. And they're not willing to spend... 10 minutes on YouTube or Google typing in what it is online. It's just like, I wasn't alive when libraries were like the thing to do or whatever. Yeah. You didn't have internet, but I would I can imagine it's probably been easier now than it's ever been in history to access information. And yet people are still doing the same stupid shit that they were doing 30 years ago that doesn't work because they, they aren't willing to invest in either a coach or consultant or just spending a little bit of time online figuring out themselves. You can literally Human do nature. anything, anything, <laughs> literally anything. anything. I think there was a lady, I always say this, but there was like a lady who like built a house from like YouTube videos. It's crazy, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you could literally You can do some crazy step. stuff on YouTube. Yeah. Like some of it's banned. Like you can't like cause you can literally do anything yeah. you want to on YouTube. But uh and that's one but that is where I see value in like like programs, like if you guys are teaching people financing or multifamily or like what I do when we scale companies as well, is like yeah, a lot of information is free out there. But this is what I've realized, right? If you don't have any money, then you have a lot of time, right? Yep. And then if you have a lot of money, you probably don't have a lot of time. Yep. So when I first started, I spent all my time on free online information, trying a bunch of stuff out, you know, feet to the pavement, whatever it is. And then now that I have a little bit of money, I have less time. I'd rather just go up to somebody like you guys or the syndicate and it's like, hey, I want to get in real estate. Don't have time to learn anything about it. Here's this kind of money. Go make. Or money here's the money me. and just let's coach me through coach, the first one. Teach me one, how to do it. Let's do it quick. That's exactly that's what I'm saying. That's what we're kind of doing yeah. now. Is and the like, same thing if you're a real estate agent or you're a loan officer or you're whatever and you're doing okay or you're even doing pretty good because a lot of loan officers aren't good with social media and they're doing pretty good. Like they're buying leads or they're doing whatever. They have referrals. They have a good referral base. The market's really good right now. It's like if you don't have the time, then go pay somebody to do it. Like 100%. just part with your money. And I think it's hard because it's I don't hard think for you. You're so a testimonial. Hard. Yeah, Kenny's like, you're investing in yourself. Why is that so hard? I'm like, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like a good return. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a terrible bet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. That's so, yeah. And then the more I think about it, I'm like, yeah, that is kind of dumb. That's like, kind of sad probably, that I said that. Yeah. But it's hard to like shift that thinking though because I think also too, people are so used to like they make that commission and they use it to pay their mortgage or they use it to like send their kids to private school or they use it for whatever they want to use it for. But to like reinvest it back in your business, it feels like you made less money because now you had to put that money back in. And you're not going to get a direct return on that within right. the first seven days. And all of a sudden you think it's a loss. And that's what I hear all the time when people talk about either my coaching program or just any coaching programs out there, right? You guys have invested in your personal brand and personal development. I hope we talked about beforehand. I have invested multiple six figures in it as well. And it's like, first of all, I don't always expect a return right away, right? I, and second of all, people are like, oh, what if it's bad? Look, I invested some 40 grand last year into something that was a hoax. Like, you know, like a real, I got screwed, right? P.S. If it sounds too, everyone listeners out there, it sounds too good to be true. Probably is too good to be true. Yeah. So I lost 40 grand on that last year. But if I had stopped at that 40 grand loss, it would have been a 40 grand loss. I never learned anything more, but I kept on investing more. And then I paid $3,000 to join a program oh. where I made seven figures from that. So that's the other thing I want to tell people listening to this as well is like, Number one, everything you do, you can learn something from it, right? So the 40 grand, I, I learned how to identify a schemey person, right? That was the first time I ever gave that much money to somebody. The second thing is, like, you're going to have bad investments. It's like real estate. Like, it's something you can't – doesn't matter how much yep. preparation you do. Like, something's going to happen. You're going to have a bad investments. And if you stop right then and there, then that's always just going to be a bad investment. But if you just keep on investing back inside of it again – I mean, we sound like broken records, just like all the biggest guys in the world, like Tony Robbins and all these – Invest in yourself because it works, right? It's like I, I feel like, and those guys they, they don't realize like those some of those guys at the top they're they're spending a lot of money and other to coaches learn other people. They, they I mean, it just it's um I think it was like Ty Lopez was saying like he used to spend two hundred thousand dollars a month on coaching mentors. Also now it's less because he's developed. I mean, and he always says is a guy that he knows. You might even know him that. He, he doesn't say his name. He doesn't have a social media following. Nobody knows him, but he's like, this guy makes more money online than anybody, and yep. that's my mentor. And he's like, this guy's making $100 million a year. I can't say who he is. He'll never come on my show, nothing. But this is a mentor, and this is who he's around. And people forget, like, if you pay and you're getting around these people, like you said, you could just be one 
conversation one handshake away no from way. a life changing or a deal or something you know that's what i love and that's even the masterminds i join now aren't even necessarily to be learn something new to me it's to be around people that are like doing the that's same stuff in this online world right i'm going to one next weekend in venice beach um and i'm super stoked for that as well because it's like you know it, it, it is i think in an online world or people that believe, i think there's so many people that trash personal branding and all that is out there so like i mean i should show you i mean you guys probably get the same thing my dms are just like people that hate on i might p.s fair warning if anybody wants to feel good about themselves run some online ads and you'll just wait till you get read some of these comments out there right it's hilarious this is amazing uh, I, we're just reading some negative. of those on my youtube channel yeah. too. Oh, as we just said negative. sorry you guys have you guys need to go work you have way too much time <laughs> like it's unbelievable it's crazy how mean people are for just no reason but the point of that being is like i think there's more of that than there are uh, the opposite and so like that's why i'll pay multiple five figures to just be in a room with other people that are doing what i'm doing at hopefully a scale higher than what i'm doing as well because there's just so much collaboration cohesion whatever you want to use that happens when you i mean even right now right we shot a whole podcast before we got on here just sitting down talking because we have so much in common we all believe in a lot of the same beliefs right, right. And we have a lot of the same values just keep doing these conversations with the same over people. and over that's why podcasts are incredible i love so i've never created a podcast because it's just a lot of work and i travel all the time and for me personally i'm always like how can i do the 80 20 rule right so for me i was like instead of hosting my own podcast I'll just leverage other people's podcasts no, and audiences there, right? Yeah. Like, and I'm super yeah. brutal honest wherever I am, right? Yeah, I just like great. totally leverage other people's audiences in order to do it as long as I'm exchanging value. Um, and so, like, for me, like, you guys believe in podcasts and personal branding, and that's why we hit it off from the beginning. But if I came in here and you guys were like, I don't even know what you do, and honestly, I think it's kind of dumb, let's shoot this podcast, this podcast would not be as fun <laughs> as it is right now, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, right yeah. before we got on here. Uh, and I had a kind of a tough day today, but I'm in, like, a much better mood right now. That's good. Um, but, yeah, it's cool what happens when a lot of times I'll just pay to be around people. That's the other reason I moved to San Diego. I lived in a small town in Florida. I traveled the whole year last year, and then now that I live in San Diego, every person – what do you do? Oh, I'm in advertising. I'm like, when I, when I came in Florida and I was making money in this small town in Florida, people thought that I was like a cam boy online. <laughs> like, yeah, they're right. making money online. That's what they thought. And now everybody here is like, we're talking about, I like at the gym, talking about Facebook ads and you, and yeah. I like geek out over that stuff, right? I love it. Uh, and so, yeah, there's something to be said about investing in yourself to learn stuff and then just to be around other people. Like you pay California sunshine tax. I don't think it's just the sunshine tax. I think it's also just to be around business and the opportunity that's over in, in this side of the world. Yeah, there's a lot. And you know, I, it was one thing you said is I think people don't understand to everybody that's negative online or criticizes people is that people that are really successful people that don't want to go online and share their stories is because they're not interested in dealing that negativity. They're surrounded by such a high group of individuals of their friends that it's such a class where they're like, they're to get in that circle so hard because they don't have to deal with that stuff. Sure. They live in a certain place and this and that, and then they don't need to go online where you're going to bash or criticize them because they have a jet or they drive this car, or they live in this neighborhood, this. It's like they've worked their way to get up there, and people that get to know them, the amount of information you get to learn, and we get to go, you know, take it back and share it probably privately and then blab about it. We don't say who it's from. People don't realize that's why a lot of them stay offline. They're like, ah, you know, I don't, I don't even want to deal with that because they know what might come with it. And the people don't realize that it sucks. But you and I would be like, man, if we could just have one conversation, <laughs> we know we get out of it, you know? Well, we have a lot of big, like, real estate investors as clients that we know too. And they're like, no. Yeah, no, I'm not no. a part of it. I don't want to get on your podcast. I don't yeah. want to whatever. But it hey, is. we, yeah. we yeah. learn from them because yeah. we have conversations, which is totally cool. But I get it. And because they just don't care about that stuff. And they, and look, they've, they have their own little mastermind in their group. And it's, I, I I mean, we've gotten to be around some of the conversation you hear. It's just the when you sit in the room and the group people, the people there, you're like, this is unbelievable. Imagine the conversations. It's, that's it's, going on. Oh, it's them. unbelievable. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's um, to me, that's one of the most exciting things to be around people like that just because of what they've accomplished and done. And they don't care about sharing it. And then you, you hear know? that they don't have, they didn't have access to half the resources. That no, they and they were today, going right? to the library to learn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, they didn't have a, yeah. You know, we live in a time where you can put an online advertisement out, right? So I was talking to a gentleman back in my hometown in Florida. He ran a newspaper. And like we were talking about like the, uh, the the process of advertising that newspaper versus the process right now of advertising on Facebook. Yeah. Like Facebook, like I told you before, one of our companies, we sold products. We sold the idea of the product before I'd even created the product, whatever it is, right? I wasn't scheming people, but it was like I had to prove the concept. And and you mentioned Tim Ferriss earlier. Tim Ferriss talks about that heavily in the 4-Hour work week, right? Running ads to something – Tell, and then telling them when they buy it, oh, it's out of stock, but you can know based on how many people put the credit card info in there whether that's a product worth pursuing. You would have been profitable so on it or not. It's crazy how it works. Most people don't do it that way. Um, 
But yeah, that's how we see the online world. And it's like it, it, back then, your library, you got to do a billboard. You got six months that your billboard's going to be up there and you don't even know if it's going to work or not work, right? And you got to pay thousands of – I was talking to a gentleman back in front of grand a like, month or something. Yeah, literally eight grand a month for this billboard that was right over and the you don't know in Destin. And you don't know – and you don't even know if people are coming from it. Are they clicking on it? Are they calling you because of the billboard? Is it not because of the billboard? Whatever it is. And today, you can put up a Facebook ad and – Three and a half minutes, and you can know within two hours if it's going to be profitable for your company or not, or if you're getting clicks, or people are buying from you, or scheduling calls with you. So and you can change it, test it, move it. The billboard's there. Yeah, Sorry, exactly. We're not changing yeah. It. Yeah. You can click edit yeah. and change the color, the scheme, all this stuff. Same thing with like click funnels. Shout out to Russell Brunch. I know they're doing FHL right now. Like you can create a website, and, and you don't need a website designer anymore. Whatever you can create a website in, in ten minutes. So it's just long story short. If you guys are listening to this right now, and you're like thinking there's all these obstacles in front of you right now, I would just argue that we have never had a better time in, in existence to be able to capitalize on the stuff that's happening right now. Yeah, and I, and um, kind of wrap up, it's funny because the thing, one of the things I love that Grant says is that um, when, when we were in the brand building, it's like, she's like, I, when I talked to her, I was like, look, this is my goal. My goal is for everybody to know me but to know what I do and who I am, I don't care if you don't work with me, you just know me. Because if you know me, there's a better chance you're gonna do business with me or something, Eventually. whether you criticize me or don't, whatever. And that's really about building a brand. That's how I look at it. So instead of the numbers and metrics and all this shit, it's like, I just keep moving forward and put out stuff where I think, oh, I know Kenny he does loans, and invests in real estate, da, 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 and like, does a podcast, that's cool. And I think, that is winning right now. It's winning over a company. It's like you don't have to be the best brand. You just have to be the best known, right? That's it. Well, and you'll like have you referrals. Said, though, you, you just do it and you figure it out as the you way. go. You're like, I don't yeah. need to have a whole roadmap of what exactly I'm going to do because it's probably not going to work anyway. May as well just one day at a time, one post at a time, analyze it, figure it out as you go. I have a gentleman that literally on the way over here connected me on it, just like Aaron connected us yeah. together, right? So, thanks, Aaron. Yeah, yeah, yeah thanks, Aaron. Shout out to Aaron, by the way, yeah. if you're watching this right now. Thank <laughs> yeah. you so much, Aaron. Um, but like, just like Aaron, or or I have another guy that has sent me so much business. I mean, unbelievable amount of business, and we do referral fees or whatever it is. But it's like he's never been a client of mine. Like we've never even got on a phone call either or whatever it is. And he just connects us. So when you say you just want to be the most well known, even if that person that knows you is not going to do business with you, when you gain someone's trust, you immediately gain their whole sphere of influence, right? Their SOI. So it's like crazy. What is it? The ninth degree or whatever. Everyone's like two degrees separation. I forget what the saying is, but essentially, it's like that's the other benefit as well that people don't talk about. It is like you know, if I gain your guys' trust, like I gain Aaron's trust on the podcast with him, right? We had an awesome podcast episode together, and so then he connected you and I together. And now you and I are speaking together. I'm sure we're gonna do something together. And then everyone that's listening to this as well, they're gonna go on Instagram, Absolutely. Follow, whatever it is. Yeah, they're friends, and it's just like this reaction that happens like that. But it all starts with putting yourself out there and putting out content in the first place. Yeah, yeah. So where can um, everybody find you? What's the best way? Yeah, sure. So uh, your business card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's in the box. I'll get Instagram it. or YouTube or if you just Google my name. But so you can go to raviabuvala.com, which is which I'm sure I'll give you guys a link. But it's just r a v i a b u v a l a dot com. You learn a little bit more about me there. Um, and then there's also uh, you can just go on Instagram. Same thing. It's just my name. My at username is at raviabuvala. R a v i a b u v a l a. And you have links to everything. And I have links to everything. And I'll give you like we have free a bunch of free resources for real estate agents i do free online training for them how to do facebook ads we have a bunch of stuff on my youtube channel and awesome. like free gifts that we'll give and i'll just give you guys a link to all that as well so you can put that in the podcast awesome cool well hey thanks, thanks for coming on thanks I mean, for having me this here is this is a, a super, blast super yeah, fun I'm, like, conversation right now right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank you guys for having that's me. awesome blast. cool